God bless you, people of God. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I want to use um, this time to share with us a word of encouragement on the use of the shield of faith, why we must put on the whole armor of God. You know, the enemy, our adversary, the word of God say he goes about like roaring lion, look, seeking whom to devour. I say, whom resisted fast in faith. Father, please, oh God, I plead the blood of Jesus, oh God, praying that God, by this word, that you will encourage your people. Oh God, the faint hearted, the discouraged, the, dis- the ones deceived, oh God, that your people will be thorough that we learn to put on the whole armor of God and make sure that we put on every piece of the armor of God. Blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Yeah, um, the enemy comes in a very different subtle ways. The enemy is a legalist. He's an accuser. The Bible says he accuses us day and night before God. He is an accuser. He comes... You know, he uses people, he uses circumstances. When you sleep, he will accuse you uh, before God. And times you get up from sleep, you feel as though you have done something wrong. It's because there are accusations that are leveled against you in the spirit without your knowledge. But I want us to learn to put on the whole armor of God. But, you know, I want to talk about the shield of faith. You know, a shield is something that you know, it's like a Roman shield. And when you hold this Roman shield, there was a day God was saying to me that when you hold a shield and you hold your sword, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, the shield of faith also for defensive weapon. It's a defensive weapon and the sword is a, an offensive weapon. There are many ways you can drop your shield. And when you drop your shield, the word that people speak to you or the word that the, the, the enemy uses people to speak, those words are sword, are sharp. Words are sharp sword. That's why when somebody speaks, you know, words that hurt, it will strike. It's a sharp sword. But the moment you recognize, that's also why you have to put on, put on the belt of truth. You recognize who you are and recognize that the word of God said there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You recognize that the word of God said, you know, that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. When the enemy comes, even like a flood, you raise, the Holy Spirit will raise a standard. The Holy Spirit will give you the word you have been meditating. You remember, so when the enemy attacks you, you raise the shield. So when you are in a battle front, we are always in a battle front. You know, you hold your shield. So when the enemy comes this way, you you turn the shield that way. When the arrow comes this way, you turn the shield that way. You don't hold your shield and and stay adamant. You hold your shield and you are active, and you keep watching. The Bible says, "Watch and pray. Watch and pray." And then, you know, the Lord Jesus is against, you know, slumbering. We have to say that if the good man of the house knows the time the thief will come, he would not have slept. He would have kept watch so that the thief would not come and break in and steal. So we are to keep watch. Most times the devil comes in a very subtle way. He can use somebody... It could be that, you know, times like we, the ministers, at times they will use somebody to try to bring subtle um, attack correction. Subtle, subtle, um, what do I call it? Um, subtle, to dispute your, the word of God in you, with you, in a way that will accuse you that you are, you are not doing the right thing. But, you know, they come in a subtle way. Like there was somebody who said to me sometime um, that you don't pay tight to ask God to heal you. Otherwise, the blood of Jesus is of no value. Okay. What this person was trying to say is trying to make me feel that I did not say the right thing. 
the word of God said, God said that when we pay tithe, he will rebuke the devourer. That is a settled, I didn't say it, it's a settled statement. It's a settled word of God. Now, and then the word of God said that without, faith without work is, um, faith without work, okay, let me use my word, is vain. It's fruitless. Every, uh, you, you demonstrate your faith by work. And the Bible said to your faith, add virtue. So you know what the word of God is saying. So you add to your faith virtue. Jesus said that the way we prove that we love him is to do his will, is to do what he said. Not to say, it's like a husband saying to the wife that I love you, I love you, and he was still beating him and beating her, and he's still you know, making things, abusing her, and keep telling her I love you. Uh -uh. Or that you have um, somebody around you that is going through a hard time, and you claim you love God, and you, you have a way to help that person, you cannot help that person. So what I'm trying to say here is that way the, 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 that way you have to add virtue to your faith. So when somebody tries to um, try to tell you that this is what you said and this is what they try to turn you around, what the enemy is trying to do is to discourage and that is an arrow. But you have to stand your ground and take the word of God and take up the shield of faith. Somebody can Start, the enemy can send an arrow through a kind of silent movement, silent attitude. And just silent attitude. You may be talking to somebody, the person, maybe your husband or wife, and the person just walk away. Bam, that is making you feel little. And then by making you feel little, if you allow that spirit to attack you, attack you that spirit has succeeded. Then you raise your shield immediately. When that making you feel little when that thing start coming that is intimidated because the bible said that god has not given us spirit of timidity that that spirit of timidity want to catch you you apprehend it immediately and said that god has given me spirit of power love and sound mind you don't you don't lower your shield you hold up your shield and then the enemy tried then you begin that's the bible say fight the good you know fight the battle of faith fight the good fight so you Continue to meditate on the word of God. What the word of God say? You keep holding the word. That is the shield. Holding your shield. There are many ways the enemy comes to discourage us, to attack. To, and whenever somebody strikes you with a word that does not, at times they will make you feel that you are not a child of God or that you are not a woman of God or something like that. But you know who you are. You know what God called you to do and you are doing what God called you to do and you know that you are doing the work of God and that you know that. The word of God said there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. And then again the Bible says who can lay any charge against the law's elect. So when people come with accusations, with you know trying to limit you, to intimidate you, you remind yourself that it is written, who can lay any charge against the law's elect? When you remind yourself this, you raise your shield. There is nobody that can lay any charge against me. Even if I have sinned against God, I will confess my sins to God and God will forgive me. We are more than conquerors. We overcome the enemy, the accuser, by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. You hold on to the blood of Jesus. You hold on to the word of God. We go through, if you are serving God in spirit and in truth, you are going to go through a lot. The enemy will do everything to discourage you. At times he will take your loved ones away from you. He will make you feel unwanted. He will make you feel rejected. He will make, you feel neg he will make, you, make people neglect you. But God said, look unto me and be you saved, all ye ends of the earth. Look unto me. He will raise enemies against you. Then the way to overcome that, you remind yourself what the word said, pray for those who hate you. And those who despitefully use you. Say so we should pray for them. And when people curse you, you bless them. When they curse you, they throw a curse against you. They throw an arrow to destroy you, to you know, make you to lower your shield. They want you to believe that what they said is true against you. 
The word of God said that Jesus is our righteousness. By your own righteousness, by no, no one can be justified. We are justified by the blood of Jesus. So we put on the righteousness, the garment of righteousness. Every day, work hard to put on the garment of righteousness. Because you are not justified by yourself, by your own works. You are justified by the achievement of Jesus Christ. Put on the shield of faith. When depression comes, you know, depression comes, it's an arrow. It's an arrow. You know, the arrow of depression comes. And tell you you cannot do anything, can't achieve anything. Devil is a liar. He is a liar. He's a liar from beginning. You speak to yourself that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That even though things don't seem to work, well, God, you just go to God and say, God, reveal to me the source of this. Everything is in the courtroom. There are cases that are against you in the courtroom of God that you don't know. The Bible says that devil, Satan, accuses the people of God day and night. Put on the whole armor of God. Don't let any peace be left. Tie the belt of truth. Tie the belt. Some people say I'm grounded in the world. It's because I have been through so much. <coughs> Excuse me. The word of God has been my source of help, strength, life. And the blood of Jesus. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamp and the word of our testimony. You can come into a situation where you feel so much hedged in. You are not all. You are not the only one. Jeremiah felt hedged in. He said that God hedged him in. But he realized, he said that it is because I have to keep in his depression. Then he came to a, an understanding that it is because of the mercy of God that we are not consumed. Because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning and great is his faithfulness. Um, Asaph, I think in Psalm 77 or something, where he was complaining that, let me try to, okay, I may not really get exactly where Asaph was, you know, he was complaining how the wicked people were prospering and all that, all that, they said, then he went to the sanctuary, he, finally he understood their end. God is the hope of the saints. People will call you names. They will tell you that God is not answering your prayer because of your fault. That what you are going through is your fault. Remind, and they accuse you. Remind yourself that the word of God said there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Remind yourself that the word of God said who can lay any charge against the Lord's elect? It is Christ who died, who was raised from the dead, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If they tell you it's your fault, it's your fault. Then you say, God, I thank you because there is no condemnation for me. If it is my fault, I thank you because Jesus died for me and bore my sins. Therefore, forgive my sins. Forgive my sins, I put on the you know, let the blood of Jesus wash me and cleanse me. However, there is, the Bible said that every tongue that rises against you in judgment, that you will condemn that tongue. Every tongue that rises up because our righteousness is in the Lord. God is our righteousness. He is our kinsman, redeemer. Our righteousness. As our righteousness, you know, nobody is righteous. Except God, and He covered us with the garment of His own righteousness. I want to read um, Psalm 45. I don't know why the Holy Spirit led me to it. I don't even know the connection that has with what I'm saying. Okay. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made, touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore, God has blessed thee forever. Guide thy souls upon thy tie, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. See, guard thy sword upon thy tie. That is the word of God. And in thy majesty, write prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee great things. Truth and righteousness and meekness. Thy arrows are sharp in the heart of king's enemy. 
whereby the people fall on that day. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is the right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces, whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand. Hacking, O daughter, and consider and incline thy ear. Forget also your own people and thy father's house. So shall the king greatly desire your beauty. For he is the Lord, thy Lord, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tyre will come with gifts. Even the rich among the people will entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is of royal gold. You hear that? The king's daughter is all glorious within. What matters is the beauty that you have displayed before God. Whatever people call you, just make your way right before God. Don't allow any arrow to penetrate. I see how I feel I see it in the spirit when somebody sends an arrow of attack, accuse, accusation, abuse, and anger, and you know words to hurt you. It strikes like an arrow, it strikes like a knife, and then it pierces spiritually. There's a big wound, there's a big hole, and creates depression. But the moment it strikes, you raise your shield of faith. And you say, you know, you get the word of God that can counter that if it is an accusation. You say, Lord, I thank you because there is no charge against me. I am justified by the blood of Jesus. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I am, I am an overcomer. I am justi justified by the blood of Jesus. I'm justified. It is your fault. It is your fault. Whatever you're going through, it is your fault. Well, God, I thank you because you are my righteousness. I'm justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are the one that forgives my sins. I confess my sins to you. And I say, don't let anybody condemn you because there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Stand firm in your faith. Hold on the shield of faith. Hold, put on the garment of righteousness. It's hard to put on because by nature we want to see ourselves like, you know, um, doing some work that will um, believe that it is our work that will justify us before God. The Bible says we are the righteousness. We'll be made righteous by the righteousness of Jesus. It's an imputed righteousness. We continue to thank God and worship and say, we, oh, he's your king. Worship down him. As we do this, we become sweet-smelling aroma before God. Even though you are going through a lot of warfare, it is because David said, when you pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. It is because God is taking you through those thorny ways. Keep your eyes on the goal. David said, my soul hope down in the Lord, for I shall yet praise him. Don't let anybody, the devil is using everybody, don't let anybody discourage you. If your mother and your father, like David said, if my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. God is our, the father of the fatherless. Everything you have in this world will pass away. If your father and your mother adore you, one day they will, it will cease because one day they will pass on. And you see yourself. So God does not want anything, anybody to replace him in our lives. Hold on to your shield of faith. Don't let any anybody discourage you. Don't let anybody change, you know, make you to feel that you are not worthy for the calling of God upon your life. As for me, God called me into an apostolic ministry. I don't owe anybody any explanation on that because I know the day God placed that anointing and authority on me. You know, and God also consecrated me. I don't owe anybody any explanation because I know the day and I know how it happened. I know the conversations. I know everything about it. It didn't just it didn't just happen, you know, in a fairy fairy. I know the war I have to pass through, the warfare that I have to pass through to obtain what God has for me. So people will talk. People will try to discourage you. People will try to bring you down. People will try to give you an identity that is not yours. People will try to give you stigma. 
I want you to believe that you are made in the image of God. That's who you are. Your true identity is that you are made in the image of God. You wrap yourself with that armor, with that shield. God said to Abraham, I am your shield. We are the seed of Abraham. God is our shield. So the shield we are holding on, which is the word of God, is God himself. He is our shield. So the Bible says, put on, you know, put on your shield of faith. It's one of the pieces of armor. Every piece of armor has a very powerful message. There's a belt of truth. You don't hold shield without the belt of truth. The truth will set you free. The truth of God is your shield. See, so I remember one day back home in Nigeria when somebody threatened me. Somebody threatened me. And the person threatened me with so much great threat. And after the threat, I started losing my sight. I realized I was going to go blind. The Lord asked me to go to the altar and do what Hezekiah did. Cry to God. After crying to God, I went to one man of God in Abba area. Remember Bible College, Abba. I went to him, the man of God. There. I, I asked, I told him that somebody threatened me and look at my eyes. The man prayed this prayer, prayer that really enlightened me. But one of the things he said in that desperate prayer was, God, your word is our shield. And then he condemned that threat. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Don't let discouragement, don't let somebody's opinion, don't let somebody's accusation, don't let somebody's attack discourage you or hinder the work of God through you or make you feel unworthy. Nobody has right to condemn you. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no charge against the Lord's elect. Before the devil operates, he, he lays accusation. I will, I will talk about how the devil operates in God's courtroom. So be encouraged, be elevated, be, be healed. Thank you, Jesus. Father Lord, Use your word to heal your people. By your strife we are healed. Father, we condemn every tongue that has risen against us in judgment. We condemn every word they speak. We condemn every arrow that is sent against us. In Jesus' name. And we thank you as you heal your people. Encourage us. Strengthen us, O oh God. Strengthen your church. Many people are going through pain. Only you can heal. By the stripe of Jesus, we are healed. Blessed be your name. You are our righteousness. You are our garment of righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen.